Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We're continuing on the topic of externalities, and last time we showed the deadweight loss of either a positive or a negative externality in a perfectly competitive market. In this presentation, we're going to start asking a simple question. If there's a deadweight loss in a perfectly competitive market, what can the government do to fix that market failure caused by the externality? To remind you of our definition one more time, an externality exists if one person's actions affect another person's welfare, but there is no compensation. So let's start off with a case of a positive externality. Once again, let's think about Sweaty Sam, who's over here. Sweaty Sam has a problem with his sweat and smell. He uses a deodorant, but people wish he would use more. There's a positive externality of 20 cents per squirt. Every time Sam uses an extra squirt of deodorant, his co-workers gain the equivalent of 20 cents on that extra squirt. And just to remind you of our example, we have Sam's private demand curve for squirts of deodorant given by the dotted green line. And we can remember that Sam's demand curve is also his marginal private value curve for deodorant. So the height of the demand curve tells us the extra benefit Sam gets from an extra squirt of deodorant. But because there's an externality, Sam's marginal private value isn't the only value created from a squirt of deodorant. Whenever Sam squirts deodorant, he creates an extra 20 cents of benefit to his co-workers. That's a positive externality. So we have the marginal social value curve, which lies exactly 20 cents above the marginal private value curve. That gap between the two curves represents the size of the positive externality on each extra unit, each extra squirt of deodorant. To get both the market outcome and our socially optimal quantity, we need to add in the supply curve. Because the externality falls on the demand side, our supply curve isn't affected by the externality. It is our marginal private cost curve. It is also our marginal social cost curve. So we have the marginal social value curve, the supply curve, and the marginal social cost curve, and the demand curve. We know that the market outcome is where demand and supply intersect at the quantity of three. We know that the social optimal quantity is where marginal social value equals marginal social cost. At this point here, at a quantity of 3.4. And they're not the same. That's why there's a deadweight loss associated with the market outcome. The market produces too little in terms of squirts of deodorant because it doesn't take into account the positive externality created by having extra squirts of deodorant. So how can the government get around this problem? The market only has three squirts of deodorant. We want more. How could the government do that? Well, if the government knew the correct level, 3.4 squirts of deodorant, then it could simply order Sam to go out and do more deodorant. It could order Sam every morning to get up and instead of only doing the three squirts that he would choose, Privately, he has to do an extra 0.4 of a squirt every morning. They could send out the deodorant inspector, the sweat police, to check that he's actually carrying that out. He, hang on, hang on. Okay, that all sounds like complete nonsense. The problem here is that the government isn't going to know the optimal amount of deodorant and... Well, how's it going to enforce it? It's not really going to send the sweat police out to check on Sam and see if he's obeying the law that says he has to have 3.4 squirts instead of three. Hmm. Maybe that's not the best way for the government to try and solve this problem of the externality, to try and get more deodorant. 
Is there a better way? Yes. And we can thank this man down here, Arthur Pigou, an economist who lived in the early part of the 20th century for the answer. And it's sort of obvious to us now. If we have a perfectly competitive market, how do we increase the level of output? Well, one way is to use a subsidy. We know that a subsidy increases output in a perfectly competitive market. Now, when there were no externalities, that led to a deadweight loss. But in the current situation, we have an externality. And we know that the perfectly competitive market has a deadweight loss. And we want to increase output to get rid of the deadweight loss. And we know that a subsidy increases output. And Arthur Pigou put two and two together and noted that in a situation of a positive externality, a government can put a subsidy on the relevant product, increase output, and fix up the market. How does it work? Well, remember our market outcome is three squirts of deodorant, but we want the socially optimal outcome of 3.4 squirts of deodorant. Remember that a subsidy puts a wedge between the demand curve, the dotted green line, and the supply curve, the upward sloping green line. So by altering the amount of subsidy, we can move the quantity bought and sold in the market, higher than three, the bigger the subsidy, the more production we'll get. Here, we've shown the optimal subsidy. In other words, it's the subsidy that leads to exactly 3.4 units being bought and sold in the marketplace. It's a subsidy such that the gap between the demand curve and the supply curve is exactly equal to the positive externality, the marginal positive externality, exactly equal to 20 cents. So the Paguvian subsidy, named after Arthur Pagu, the Paguvian subsidy which will fix the market failure of the positive externality is where the government sets the subsidy exactly equal to the marginal externality at the socially optimal quantity. In our example here, that's exactly 20 cents. So what we want to do to solve the externality is we want the government to put a 20 cent per squirt subsidy on deodorant. Why is this a good solution? Well, compared to the quantity restriction, we don't need any sweat police now. If the government puts a 20 cent subsidy on deodorant, the market will do the rest. The market will automatically lead to the right quantity being bought and sold. Secondly, the government doesn't have to know the socially optimal quantity. It still needs to know what is the positive externality due to a squirt of deodorant but we know that. That's 20 cents. That's much easier for the government to find out. If a government can estimate the size of a positive externality of an extra squirt of deodorant, it can set the subsidy and let the market fix the problem for itself. So let's summarise. If we have a positive externality, then we have a market failure. How can the government fix it? They can put a subsidy in place to increase market production. What's the best the government can do? Well, they can set an optimal subsidy, which is exactly equal to the marginal external value, the marginal value of the externality at the socially optimal quantity. If they set this subsidy, the market will fix the problem. That's called a Paguvian subsidy after Arthur Pagu, who first realised this insight. Talk to you next time when we'll think about a negative externality.